Hey, how's it going everyone? It's your boy Wax here, and we are back with another episode of Shadows of Doubt. And since you all seem to love the videos so much, I decided to make it into a fun little series where in every new video, I will jump into a brand new city and solve a whole new murder. For the name of this city, I'm just going to generate a random name, but for future videos, if you want to drop a city name or your favorite seed down below, I might just try it out in the next video. To also make the game harder for myself, I'm going to set the world to large, difficulty to extreme, zero cash, zero lockpicks, and finally, I'm setting a rule that I'm not allowed to use the government database at all. And with all that being said, the name of our city for this episode is Astralton. Here's the seed if you end up wanting to check it out yourself. Let's get into it. Upon arriving in the city, I was completely broke and left to wander the streets. There was a nice little diner called Carolina's, but sadly I couldn't afford even the cheapest of items. It was just starting to occur to me how difficult this might end up being. My main priority in the beginning was focusing on finding some extra change, or some lockpicks lying about. Eventually, I remembered I could just ask people for money, so I quickly became your local everyday beggar, but no one seemed to like that very much. I tried to play some basketball, but even the basketball didn't like that. Cold, alone, and broke, I wandered the streets, right before a clash of thunder summoned a killer. Vasily Projects. As I headed into the building, I was just hoping I was the first one there. But that hope withered away when I witnessed enforcers breaking the door down just as I arrived. There was the body, laying in the corner, with a message written on the wall. SL paid. I figured enforcers were going to be in there a while, and I didn't want to waste any time, so I searched the building for a surveillance room. On the seventh floor, I found it, but I still didn't have any lockpicks. I scrounged up every loose scent and hairpin the place had, but when I tried to check the tapes, I didn't have the password. I'd have to figure something out and come back later. When I returned to the scene of the crime, the whole place was taped off as usual, with one enforcer left to guard the apartment. It was probably his first day on the job. Adult female, stabbed to death between 10.45 a.m. and 12 p.m. She also had a bottle in her hands, as well as various alcohol all over the apartment. I guess if you were going out, that'd be the way to go. Reading through the files led me to believe that two people lived here, Shalisha and Magdalena. The question was, which one was our victim, and where was their partner? I finally identified the victim as Shalisha Lovelace once I found her purse with her ID inside, but that wasn't all I found. In the corner of the room, a crumpled up note. Let's play, with the letters J-R-E-E-L-T. I scanned it for prints and got a solid match for a B print that didn't appear anywhere else in the apartment. I already had Shalisha's prints, and I was willing to bet that these D prints I found all over the room belonged to her partner Magdalena, but I would still need to find her to prove that theory true. Sadly, there wasn't much to go on in order to find her. She was a food vendor, and without her picture it'd be near impossible to track her down, but I was willing to give it a shot anyway. The last thing I grabbed before I got out of there was their address book and the half bottle of vodka sitting on the kitchen table, because let's be honest, Shalisha didn't need it anymore. I had interesting leads, but nothing solid. I needed to track down Magdalene. I started by asking all the local stalls around the apartment building, but they either hadn't heard of her or weren't willing to share any information whatsoever. I was back to where I started. My next lead brought me to the Ash Magpie Lounge, which is where Shalisha worked. Since I had enough money this time from raiding everyone's cupboards, I decided to treat myself to a delicious burger and cola before jumping right back into the investigation. And that was when something interesting happened. Someone actually knew who Magdalene was, and while they pretty much directed me to the same area, it motivated me to keep looking for her. I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked, and I asked. No leads, no witnesses, nothing. But sometimes when you've done every plan A through Z and nothing has worked, it's just time to start back over at A again. And that's what I did. I ran to the city hall and purchased a code breaker to take back to the surveillance room. With the computer unlocked, I went through and made a decent sized list of witnesses that were all out and about during the time of the murder. I had no idea who these people were, but they might have been the only ones who actually saw something. I also got pretty lucky as there was a camera in the streets directly outside Vasily Projects. With that footage, I added a couple more faces to my list. 
but with hardly any leads to follow, I couldn't let this just be a witness list anymore. This was a list of suspects. I also went back to the crime scene one more time and realized I had the password for Magdalene's computer, and with that, her profile and her picture. Hopefully this would make it easier to find her in the streets. I started showing people the picture around the city and within 10 minutes I tracked her down to a side street. No matter what I asked though, she refused any information with me, so I knew what I had to do. Now that Mag was in cuffs, I scanned her prints and concluded my initial theory. Mag was not the killer, and this wild goose chase was the biggest waste of time ever. I was back to square one, for the second time. Again, back to interviewing possible witnesses, when they struck again. In my fastest efforts, I raced to McLean Towers, but once again, enforcers arrived just seconds before me. I could feel that the murderer was close, so as soon as enforcers entered, I headed for the apartment surveillance room like last time. There was already an enforcer working inside, along with the janitor. There was no time to waste. I was gonna have to force my way in. I knocked out an enforcer, a random man in cuffs. I had to check fast, but just as I was watching the tapes, a second enforcer entered. I had to leave. I went back to the new crime scene, same ordeal, stabbed to death with another crumpled up note laying beside her, but this time an additional letter for the additional murder. But little did they know, it would be the last murder they ever committed, and even though I didn't realize it right at that moment, they personally handed me the clue that would bring them in. I opened the city directory and sorted by the J's, five letter last name consisting of possibly R-E-E-L-T. Jeter. There it was. It had to be. It felt like a crushing weight was finally off my shoulder as I wrote down their address and went to put an end to this. Of course, they lived in Vasily projects the whole time. Same as Shalisha, the first victim. It always seems like these murderers are a lot closer than we realize. I knocked on apartment 1501 and the man who opened the door had a very familiar face. He was on our suspects list after all, when we caught him on the street camera. It felt good knowing even if he didn't give me that letter, I was still on the right track to find him. I threw cuffs on him and raided his safe to find the most beautiful sight I had ever seen. I took his prints, cleared my suspect list, threw a wrench, and headed out for City Hall to turn in my case. However, as weird as the world is sometimes, we can never account for the occasional slip through time and space. I paid a $58 hospital fee, and since my arrest had been voided, I took the time to go about it a better way. And there we have it, handcuffed again. I jumped out the front door this time so as to not fall through any interdimensional holes in the fabric of reality. I was feeling rather swell as I turned in my files for the case, resulting in a full sweep on all matters needed. I celebrated the only way I knew how in this city. I had been wanting a hot dog from Carolina since I got here. So that's exactly what I did. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and joining me on the case. If you enjoyed the video, maybe drop me a like and comment down below, or maybe subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. At the time of recording this, we're about six subs away from a thousand, so just thank you all so much for contributing to that. You're very much appreciated and valued. Please let me know what I can do to make things better down below, and with all that, I hope you're all having an amazing day, and I will see you on the next one.